I love Jesus. I know the, the, the love of Christ cover you. The Holy Ghost overshadow you, just as he overshadowed Mary. And things and Christ was called, Christ, Christ was formed. The Holy Ghost overshadowed you until things are formed in your mind and your heart. It's possible. God bless you. We are shelling on you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Last time we confirmed we are overcomers because of the status, the position of Christ. Now we're going to see areas that God has made us overcomers. Overcomers. One. The Lord wants you to overcome the wrong status. You are living in the wrong house. You are going to get a better one. You just need to discover that. And God, you open way. You know, God is waiting for his children just to realize they are not living right. And he just make way for them. Yes, you are living under a person who oppresses you. Can you please admit, it's not God's will that somebody should torture me. It's not God's will that somebody should molest me. Somebody should... Rise up in the morning and think on how to suppress my life. It's not the will of the Father. It's not the right of God's children. If you read now, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 2. Let's go there very quickly by God's grace. 2 Kings. Aha. Uh -huh. That is chapter 7, verse 2. There was famine and people were feeding from Dove, eh? a dove, and people are feeding from dirty things, and um, and there was and others even started slaughtering their children, feeding on their own children. That is extreme, extreme uh, drought, and uh, we see something here now. Or uh, the Bible says in verse three. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. And now there were four lepers, four lepers men, at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? I would like to tell the truth. You are an overcomer because you are asking this question. You've been thrown out. You've been laughed after, uh, laughed at. You've been so much in pain. You've been discarded and denounced. You've been considered as an outcast. But now, you see now, the moment you put into your mind this position, this question, why are we sitting here until we die? You are sitting in a position that the only thing that can come out or can be worked out of that place is death. Why sit here until we die? Verse 4, if we say we will enter the city, the famine in the city, is in the city. We shall die there. People are dying in the city. There's extreme dryness and lack of food. People have started feeding on their own children, slaughtering their own children. If we, and to make things worse, we are rappers. We are already, even without the drought, we are already considered outcasts. If we go back to the city, we will die there. If we sit here, we will die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the armies of Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall die. Remember what happened as they went? But they said, let us move. God bless that dimension. God is waiting for his children to say, it's not right that I should suffer, I should be depressed. It's not right that I should be a slave of drugs. It's not right that I should, but my parents should beg for my school fish. It's not right that I should always be running away. No way, no way, no way. When you say that, let me tell the truth, the father, the owner of my soul, the father, the owner of your life, will arise and say, now my children know their rights. Let me say this. One thing that you make you uh, is when you discover this, uh, uh, that you need to change the, the, the status you are in, the curse that is being exacted on you should, is not true. No one should put, yes, a cultural curse, ancestral curse, uh, family line curse. These days you find a family, people are dying of cancer. I remember one of our family, 
the, 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 the older brother died of cancer, lung cancer. The other one, cancer of the leg. The other one, cancer of bile duct. Now, how can the same family, people follow each other, dying on the same ailment? It must be a demonic attack. Even doctors today must admit there's something strange operating families. And that's why one thing we need to do is to discover a, a curse following a family line, people of them, the same father and mother, people of the same bloodline, and we break it. We break it. Look at the way now um, uh, Jabez in First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez saying because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the Lord, called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory. And that your hand will, would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. Remember the mother named Jabez. After an incident. I bore you in pain. So I will not give you the right name. I give you a name derived from a, a painful experience. So that that name you ever speak. And that name will ever give you identity. And that name will ever attract, attract more pain. That name will ever attract the spirit of his kind. And this man said, no, 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 no. God, I can't accept this. If there's no pastor, no bishop, no prophet who can pray for me. Because all of them have accepted what mother said. I'll go to God direct and denounce this status. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. I want to remove the word Jabez. Put your name there. John, James, Jane. And now call on the God of who lives. And he said, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Your mighty heart be upon me. And keep me from evil. And finally he said, I may not cause pain. My name comes from sorrow. My mother bore me in pain and gave me the name that, has, that expresses the pain. But now I pray that God you bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. You are head be upon me that I'll, you keep me from evil. At the same time, I will never cause pain. This is the end, the terminal end of the curse. I will never cause pain to anybody. It is never propagated. From me, henceforth, to generations to come, this should not continue. And he says, I will not cause pain. Yes, I will not cause pain. The mother blessed me because the mother think that giving birth to me and the process of delivery, she had a lot of pain. It's as if she blames pain on me. I was an innocent, innocent baby. And that pain, I will not, never, never, never allow me, even anybody from my life, to cause pain. I terminate the word. I terminate the experience. I terminate the demon. I terminate the curse. And I now declare from now, my territory are enlarged. My hands are blessed. Yes, there's no evil around me. I will never cause pain. And God, you keep me from evil. And from today, I'm a producer of blessing. And I'll never cause any pain. I'm announcing to you. Today, we are destroying what we call wrong status. Time has come. And don't worry, with the money or without money. Can you please tell the devil, I now discover this is wrong thing. This is wrong faith. This is wrong status. This is wrong spirit. Whenever you say that. God, you open a dimension just as he opened for the leprous people. When they said, if we stay here, we'll die. If we go back to Samaria, we'll die. Let us go now. When they said, let us go, God honored that dimension. That's very important. When Jabez said, no, God, this should be over now. Hey, enlarge my territory. Let, not, let me not have the spirit of my name, but have the spirit of God. Let I say you may have a bad reputation, but from today, 
I, I command, don't receive the spirit of that reputation. You may have a bad name. Don't receive the spirit of that name. Receive the spirit of God. Your territories be enlarged. The hand of God be upon you. God keep you from evil. And from today, no pain will come out of you. I declare these blessings on you. Receive in Jesus' name. Amen.